Yeah, in for a treat. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're pitting the 2020 version of The Witches against its 1990 predecessor. What happened to us? Why are we mouses? My greatest triumph. A welcome. Genius. That's some serious ratification. For this installment of Verses, we're comparing Robert Zemeckis' adaptation of Roald Dahl's children's book to the cult classic film produced by Jim Henson. In case you haven't seen either film, keep in mind that there will be spoilers. Which version did you find the most bewitching? Let us know in the comments. Round 1. Casting Casting director Victoria Burroughs mostly nailed it with the 2020 film. Anne Hathaway strikes just the right balance of elegant, silly, and deliciously evil as the Grand High Witch. I know you love kitties. <laughs> but what do you think of... mice? Mice? Yeah, mice. Octavia Spencer puts a sassy spin on the grandmother while still remaining true to the character's clever, caring, and confident nature. I know a little something about numbers. Seven and six together means a test is coming. Two sixes mean abundance. So it looked like a big test might be coming. Relative newcomers Jazir Bruno and Cody Lee Eastick are both solid as the boys turn mice. Stanley Tucci is well cast as the uptight Mr. Stringer, although we could have used more of him. Also, we love Chris Rock, but when we hear him voice a mouse, it's hard not to think of the guinea pig from Dr. Doolittle. Do a little dance, make a little love, get down tonight. The 1990 witches couldn't have been more perfectly cast by Celestia Fox. Angelica Houston was born to play the Grand High Witch, giving her what may be the thickest German accent in cinematic history. Of course, you give money for the little children. And we, of course, we also give money for the little... As much as we love to hate this villain, we love watching Houston even more. My Zetherling may not be a household name, but she plays the quintessential wise grandmother in what might be her most famous performance. I traveled the world in search for the Grand High Witch, but I never found her. I don't really believe that anyone has ever found her. While their careers were brief, former child actors Jason Fisher and Charlie Potter fit the bill as Luke and Bruno, respectively. Plus, how can you go wrong with Rowan Atkinson as the prickly hotel manager? Rats. There are no rats in this hotel. I saw one this morning running along the corridor into the kitchens. Madam, you only arrived in the hotel this afternoon. While both films have spellbinding casts, it's Houston's performance as the Grand High Witch that gives the 1990 film an edge. Like Gene Wilder as Willy Wonka, Houston lives this part so well that it's hard for even an actress of Hathaway's caliber to top her. Round one goes to the original. Winner, The Witches, 1990. 2020-0-1991. Round 2. The Witches In the book, Dahl described the witches as bald, with claws instead of hands, and squared feet. The 2020 film stays true to Dahl's vision. A notable addition is that the witches have what look like scars across their mouths, calling the Joker to mind. You want to know how I got these scars? The costume designers and hairstylists do an impeccable job of giving each witch a glamorous exterior. Ladies. Prepare for removal. Underneath the fancy wigs and clothes, however, the makeup department turns in some wicked work. You are a heap of eat for nothing. As great as the practical effects on the witches are, the CGI can be lacking. Whenever Hathaway's mouth is stretched out with sharp teeth, we keep expecting the deadlights to emerge. We're still shocked that the original Witches didn't score an Oscar nomination for its phenomenal makeup effects. Being made at a time when CGI wasn't commonplace, the filmmakers had to think outside of the box. When Houston and her fellow Witches are disguised as humans, those purple eyes were enough to send a shiver down anyone's spine. I've got something for you here. Something I think you'll like. <gasps> The makeup crew also delivered with prosthetic wizardry that still blows us away 30 years later. Their greatest feat was the makeup on Houston, which reportedly took over six hours to put on. 
Which, uh... Seeing as she ended up looking like a hunchbacked vulture, she couldn't have been more uncomfortable. However, this never comes through in her dedicated performance. My greatest triumph. A work of genius. Though the witches in both versions are great and repulsive to look at, the ones in the original film showcase some of the finest practical effects in Jim Henson's filmography. A bitch who dares to say I'm wrong will not be pissed. Very long! <laughs> That's another point for the 1990 film. Winner, The Witches, 1990. 2020 Zero, 1992. Round three, The Mice. The CGI in the 2020 film can at times feel unnecessary. Couldn't they have gotten a real snake, chicken, and cat? Give her a kiss. When it comes to the talking mice, however, we understand why the filmmakers took the CGI route. I'm not afraid of nothing. Don't get us wrong, the mice don't look realistic per se, which might turn some viewers off. That being said, our main trio of mice all have distinctive designs that help to bring out their personalities. What happened to us? Why are we mouses? Mice! mice. Whatever! There's a convention of witches here in the hotel, and they have an evil potion. They put it in your chocolate. My chocolate? Crikey! We know they're not really there, but the modern technology does allow the mice to be more expressive and energized than they would have been 30 years ago. While the 1990 film occasionally used real mice, the filmmakers largely relied on animatronics and puppets. Three different sizes of mice were made, and it's hard not to admire the craftsmanship that went into them. Bruno, I don't believe it, I can talk. That said, the mice effects can admittedly be hit and miss. While the bigger models are full of life, the smaller ones sort of look like cat toys, especially when shot at a distance. But just because you're a... That doesn't mean the timer. Uh, good lord. <laughs> the puppeteers deserve props given the limitations of the time, but this is the one area where the film starts to show its age. Ouch! Ouch! Out before I call the police, you'll bear me old loony, just I don't go think on, they recognize me. Still, there is a certain old school charm to these effects. The techniques used to create the mice in both films have their advantages and drawbacks. We're tempted to give this point to the 1990 film for all the innovative thinking that went into the mice. Not to mention, we're starting to get sick of seeing so many CGI rodent movies. I can't believe this happened to you. Believe me. Things could be a lot worse. They could. But since the mice in the reimagining have more detail and less restrictions, the 2020 film will win this round by a whisker. Winner, The Witches 2020. 2021, 1992. Round four, faithfulness to the source material. In Dahl's book, the boy protagonist is English and his grandmother is Norwegian. The 2020 adaptation offers more diversity, with both characters being played by African Americans. Although the villains want to eradicate every child, it feels like the writers use the interactions between characters of color and witches to create a new allegory about how black people are treated in society. And aren't you a lucky fella, hmm? It's not every day that a young gentleman such as yourself is fortunate to come and stay in such a fine hotel as this now, is it? This adaptation also introduces a new character in Daisy, voiced by Kristen Chenoweth, as an orphaned girl who was turned into a mouse. I'll fetch him. Did you just talk? Despite all these changes, this film keeps Dahl's original ending. The main character remains a mouse and is okay with it, even if his lifespan has been reduced. I'll be a very old mouse and you'll be a very old grandmother, and we'll both die together. With a little luck, darling. The 1990 film also added a new character in Miss Irvine, the Grand High Witch's not-so-evil assistant, who turns Luke, and presumably Bruno, back into humans at the end of the film. This is the movie's most significant change from Dahl's book, and one that the author was not pleased with. <laughs> As a matter of fact, Dahl found it, quote, utterly appalling, and requested that his name be removed from the credits. While a more faithful ending was shot, director Nicholas Rogue ultimately went with the one scene in the finished film. It doesn't matter who you are and what you are as long as somebody loves you. Given how dark the rest of the movie is, the happy ending honestly isn't unwelcome, even if Dahl didn't approve. 
It's hard to say what Dahl would have thought of the 2020 film, especially since he was notorious for hating adaptations of his work. He even hated Willy Wonka. It's impossible, my dear lady. That's absurd. Unthinkable. Since the newer version sticks with Dahl's original ending, we have to give it the point. Winner, The Witches 2020. 2020 to 1992. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Round 5. The Creep Factor Robert Zemeckis knows how to balance whimsy with darkness. As seen in Who Framed Roger Rabbit, death becomes her and the Polar Express. You are just like me, my friend. A Scrooge! <laughs> While The Witches has plenty of whimsy with its colorful set pieces, it comes up short in the darkness department. Though there are intense moments and sinister designs that will creep out younger viewers, Zemeckis mostly plays it safe. <laughs> 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 That's some serious ratification. A key example is when characters are turned into mice and rats. It looks like they're passing magical gas, which sums up the more lighthearted tone. <laughs> With Guillermo del Toro and Alfonso Cuaron serving as producers, we expected something more consistently grim. Life changes all of us. I mean, look at me. In addition to having the visionary master behind The Dark Crystal and Labyrinth as a producer, the 1990 film was directed by Nicholas Rogue. Despite being rated PG, The Witches was every bit as twisted and gritty as Rogue's Don't Look Now. Nowhere is this more apparent than in the transformation scenes, which draw comparison to an American werewolf in London. Rogue's film was not afraid to frighten children, and to this day, it still gives us nightmares. This stinking little carbuncle has had 500 doses. <laughs> we are having instantaneous action. <laughs> Believe it or not, Rogue made the film less scary after certain moments frightened his son. If the intent was to scare kids into not accepting candy from strangers, this movie succeeded. I put one dose of my formula on the bar of chocolate. I gave it to a repulsive, smelly boy who was in the lobby. It's funny, although the 2020 film maintains Dahl's dark original ending, it's more family-friendly overall. The 1990 film has a more conventional happy ending, but it's infinitely darker throughout. While the 1990 film wasn't a financial success upon release, its creepy atmosphere has made it a cult classic. The reimagining lacks the same creep factor, and therefore does not stand out as much. Better is no good either. I demand maximum results. For that reason, we're giving this round and the overall win to the 1990 film. Winner, The Witches 1990. 2022, 1993. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.